Today's video is brought to you by Game Glass. With Game Glass, you can take control of your ship using a tablet or a phone. You can try out some of the free pre-made shards, or you can also make your own custom shards and share them with the community through the built-in marketplace. So gone are the days where you have no more rooms for all your key bindings. On top of that, Game Glass also supports other games like Elite Dangerous, so follow the link in the video description and try Game Glass for free. Use the offer code DTEA to get 5% off any purchase. So this is the information page that we have about the new and upcoming ship, the MISC Odyssey. We're going to dive through the information that we have. We're going to be looking at some 3D models of the ships and we're going to try to see how much information we can kind of pull out of it, both out of what they're telling us on the page, but also what we kind of deduct from pictures and those kind of things. And we're going to start here. They have some six little info boxes here that we can uh, we can look at. They say that it's going to be able to carry 252 SCU of dedicated cargo space. Um, that's pretty good. That's a decent amount of cargo for, for the size of, uh, of the ship. Again, it is really intended to be a deep space exploration, be a self-sustainable ship. So having that large amount of cargo, I can definitely see that being uh, being very, very handy. We also begin to get some of the first pictures of the ship here in, in the background. And um, notice here we have the bridge up on top. We have an extra little um, area down here underneath it. We're going to come back to that in a second. So they have six small information boxes here. In the first one, they talk about the cargo hold, where they say it's going to have 252 SCU of dedicated cargo to carry everything you're going to need. So as a trade vessel, it's going to be faring okay. That's a pretty decent amount of cargo you can carry in that thing. We can first of all begin to get a sense of scale from the people standing here underneath the ship. And we can also notice here a ramp here at the front where people can drive in vehicles. So there's going to be a vehicle bay and there's actually also going to be a ship hangar, but we're going to come back to that in uh, in a second. Massive engines. And we can see this extra cockpit out here. Very good field of view, it seems it's going to have. And it kind of reminds me of the front of, uh, of the Prospector, which makes sense because you can see the mining laser underneath here. And what you see out here on the side is the tractor beam. And then, of course, we have the um, the bridge itself. If we look at this, you kind of see a chair in here. We have a person here. So looking at that, it does look like it's going to have a relatively narrow field of view, a bit like what we have on the freelancers. So view from the bridge itself is probably not going to be amazing, but it looks like you're going to have a great view from the, uh, from the mining spot um, on the underside. Moving on to weapons and shields, what we can see here is that it's going to have three remotely operated turrets with size 5 guns um, and four strategically precision missile racks uh, and shields so they can take a beating. So it's going to have some relatively strong shield, a shield of that size you would expect so. We can see two of the turrets here, one here and uh, and one here and I suspect the other one's going to be somewhere on the, on the belly of the ship. And next we get to that hangar that we talked about. We can see two Odysseys here in the background, both with their hangar bays open as you can see here. So that is actually from the top. Uh, it is going to be what they call an extra small pad, so I'm expecting we're going to see it be able to carry something akin to what we have on the 890 jump in terms of hangar size, or maybe what we have on on the Carrick. I think it's it's that kind of size we should expect. I'm not expecting this to be something huge, something massive, but I would say if it fits on the Carrick, it will probably also fit in uh, in the hangar here on uh, on the other side. The question is, of course, you can kind of use it as a, as a double hangar as you can on the Carrick, where you can both lower a ship down, but you can also have one. It seems like this may have a little bit more headroom in the hangar than what you have with the Carrick, but uh, we'll be looking at some schematics of the ships here um, in a bit. But for now, at least you can see how it opens up here at the top. And it looks like the rear half of the ship is purely going to be taken up by hangar space. So most of the level will compart, but it's going to be on the forward part of the ship. The ship will also have a tier 2 met bay, same as what we see on both the 890 as well as the Carrick. So that is very nice to see, again, for a deep space, stay out forever, basically, uh, exploration ship. Having a mid bay, of course, is an absolute must. Seeing it at tier 2 is also very, very nice. And now for the things that makes me the most excited, that is its mining and tractor beams. Now we can see this cockpit here underneath, and we can see the mining arm being extended out here. And zooming in, we can see the tractor beam out here on the side. It's going to be a size 2 um, head. And as we can see here, it looks like a single, maybe it's a single double seat. That's actually hard to judge from here. But at the very least, it's going to be working in a similar fashion to what we have on the mall today that I don't think the mining laser is going to be controlled from the pilot seat. So if you are going to use it as a solo mining ship, then you will have to get out of your seat, run down probably an elevator somewhere down to the mining section down here. 
and that's going to allow you to take control of the um, of the mining laser and probably also the uh, the tractor beam from uh, from that position there, which is uh, super super nice to see. You can also, if you spot here at the back, we can see that third turret we talked about before is right here at the back at the very rear of the ship. So we have two on top and one at the back, all of them remotely controlled and with size 5 weapons. So it's going to be six size 5 guns in total. So that's a decent amount of firepower. And of course, the new big headline feature for the Odyssey is the onboard refinery. And this is what's going to allow this thing to stay out in the black for as long as it's like. It says here that gas captured by the ship's intake is automatically converted into hydrogen fuel. So it will automatically just accumulate hydrogen fuel. Maybe you have to go to Lagrange clouds and fly around inside Lagrange cloud in order to refuel. I don't know, but, but at least you will be able to capture gas and convert that into fuel. And also you can see here that continuum mined can uh, be refined into quant uh, quantum fuel. So you can basically just go out and mine continuum and you can get your own quantum fuel back. Now, the big question, of course, with this refinery is whether it's going to be able to also reprocess that continuum into um, into cargo. I don't think that is the case, because if we zoom in on this picture here and look at the screen way back here in the back, we can see here that it does say fuel processing system. That kind of indicates to me that it's solely going to be a fuel processing. That means if you're going to be using it for a, as a mining platform, you will still have to go back with your continuum between every trip, meaning you should probably not expect to use this that much as a solo miner because, well, you, unless you can find extremely large rocks at some point that's going to be way bigger than what you can carry in a prospector or in a mole, then you might have to go um, and use this. But otherwise, if it can't reprocess these materials into cargo but only into fuel, then you will probably be better off just going out in a prospector or if you're a crew in a mole. But of course, I don't know, and the ship is obviously not done, not flight ready, so this could be placeholders. Maybe CIG is going to change their mind regarding the refinery. I don't know, but we will have to uh, have to wait and see how that uh, how that pans out and what happens um, when the ship is actually flight ready. So we get some schematics of the ships, and I'm going to start with what's going to be the lower deck of the ship. Back here, we can see the main hangar, which is where you're going to be storing your ships. That's going to be a bulkhead, and then you're going to have the vehicle hangar here. What we have here is the um, is the vehicle cargo ramp. This one back here was the was the ship hangar. There we have the vehicle hangar. That's going to be a main elevator, be able to take you between decks. And going further forward, we have the med bay down here on the lower levels as well. So it looks like there's going to be some kind of um, of walkway that's going to take you back, and you can go into the med bay, or you can continue straight into this area here. That's going to take you into the mining systems and the mining control. So all the mining equipment is up here in the front uh, at the lower deck as we would expect. Now I'm not sure if that would we see right here, if that's an elevator or what that is between levels. We'll have to check that. But let's go and jump over the main levels. It could be there because there's some stuff here as well. But this is the main level. It looks like there's going to be some walkways around here. Maybe it's going to be a catwalk so we can go and yeah, it looks like there's railings here. So it's probably going to be some kind of catwalk that's going to go around the edge. And we can go back here. Maybe that's going to be some hangar controls back here for um, for overlooking the uh, the rear hangar. Then above the um, above the garage, we're going to have a, a locker room for people. We're going to have docking collars, large docking collars. Oh, a small and a large docking collar. Um, that's nice. One of each on each side. And next to it, we have, again, the main elevator going up between the levels. I really hope there's going to be another elevator somewhere and not just that one. I hope there's going to be one directly from the bridge up here down to the mining level. So we don't have to run all the way back, take that elevator and run all the way forward again if you want to swap between mining laces. It could be a way to kind of discourage people from using it as a solo mining ship, but I really hope we're going to have an elevator somewhere else. I'm guessing this is going to be a mess hall. That is a mess hall indeed. Lots of small rooms around here which is going to be crew quarters, right? So there's going to be crew quarters scattered around this with this hallway here with a main mess hall in the middle. Moving further forward, we have the escape pods, which makes sense, put them close to where people are uh, spending most of their time. Then we have component access, which is stored up here at the front. And then we're also going to have the bridge and also the remote road torch from uh, road access to the torch. Looks like there's going to be four seats up here, which makes sense, one pilot seat and four, or sorry, three remote turrets. Then we have what they call the aft deck, but is probably the upper deck. We can again see the main elevator right here, taking you up to, uh, to the aft deck. What we have here 
This is the Javit, Javit generator, gravity generator, which is going to be located right here next to the refiner, which is going to be at the very, very top. Further back here, we should have engines. Yep, that looks like engines. And again, another catwalk that seems to go around. That looks like this is shielded, so they may just be um, access to these engineering spaces that you get through these, uh, these walkways here. And finally, we get a technical breakdown, and as we can see here, it is an absolutely massive ship. It is actually not as long as the as the 890. The 890 is, is a 205 meters long, if I recall correctly. This is 140, so it's going to be significantly shorter than the 890. But of course, the 890 also has this very pointy nose. There's not a lot of like a lot of the length of it is really just taken up by that forward hanger, and then there's even after that a lot of, of space that is well wasted as a turret up there. But other than that. A lot of this length of the 890, of course, is, is going to be wasted by by that uh, that shape. Whereas the Odyssey here is a lot more boxy in its shape. There's, of course, still the little wedge in terms of the, the cockpit up there. But overall, it's going to be a little bit more boxy. So it might actually feel like there is similar, if not more, internal space. Um, at least it seems like it's going to be, uh, be at least equivalent to what you have in terms of the 890. Width-wise, it is a little bit wider. But... That again, we see these engines here on the side. I think that's what's going to take up the majority of the width. I think hull-wise, it's not going to be much wider than the hull that we have on something like the 890. It's going to be very comparable to uh, to the size there. Then the height is 35 meters, which is slightly less tall than the, than the 890. Uh, finally, I just want to go and take a closer look at the ship itself because I managed to get a uh, get a hands on some a 3D model here. We can see the turret. It's not a complete model. Obviously, there is a turret missing back here, and I also believe the turret on the, on the rear of the ship. Yeah, turret on the rear of the ship is missing too. So there are some components missing, and obviously there are gaping holes in the model. So it's not flawless, but at least it's going to allow us to take a, a closer look at uh, what the ship's going to look like. We can see the mining uh, head here. We can see the main cockpit. We can see the um, the mining station down here. And that's what I'm talking about. You can see how wide it is and in true MISC style. It even has these winglets out here on the side that's even further going to add. So you can actually see when we look down the length here, the width of the hull is only about half the beam of the full ship. So it's it, a, lot of the, a lot of the width is really taken up by those engines and by those winglets that MISC like to put on their ships. So that explains the very, very wide ship. So overall, it's a good looking ship and I could definitely see this becoming a strong contestant to both the Carrick and also the 890, but I think 890 may be a different type of people who are interested in the, uh, in that as a little more of a luxury ship. It's less functional, at least far from as functional as, uh, as this one is. I'm definitely looking forward to taking a look at the ship. When exactly it's going to be available, I don't know. I mean, as you can see here, they have it in, uh, in grayscale available now and they have the internal layout laid out and a lot of the stats, so it can't be too far away, but... A patch or two, maybe. Hopefully, we're going to see the Misk Odyssey in Star Citizen. But that's good for today. Thanks a lot for watching. And until next time, I will see you guys in space.